Welcome back, grade 10 math students. This is the first lesson on working with quadratics in factored form. Up until now, we've only worked with quadratics in vertex form. So today, we're going to be learning how to work with quadratics if they're in this form right here. This is factored form. The objective of today's lesson is to be able to determine the x-intercepts of an equation if we we're given the equation in factored form. So if we're given this equation, you will be able to tell me what the x-intercepts of that parabola are. Second goal of this lesson is to be able to sketch the graph of that parabola if it's in factored form. So if I give you an equation like this, you'll be able to sketch the graph of that parabola for me. Before we get started with that, let's first of all just show that an equation in this form is in fact a quadratic equation. In order to show that, I've chosen an equation here y equals 2 x minus, times x minus 5 times x plus 1. I've chosen that equation. And then we're going to show that the second differences are going to be constant. We know from earlier in this unit, if the second differences are constant, that's a quadratic equation. If the first differences were constant, that would be a linear equation. So this is the table of values for this equation. Let's just go through and calculate the first and second differences and see what we So if we go through and do that, so let's do the first one here, 0 minus 14. So I'm going to do 0 minus 14. And that gives us negative 14. Negative 10 minus 0 gives us negative 10. Negative 16 minus negative 10 gives us negative 6. Negative 18 minus negative 16 gives us negative 2. If you go on and follow that same process, you will get these corresponding values. Okay, so those are our first differences. First differences. That is written terribly. But anyway, nonetheless, those are our first differences. Now let's calculate our second differences. Second differences. The second differences, negative 10 minus negative 14 give us 4. Negative 6 minus negative 10, so negative 6 plus 10, 4. Negative 2 minus negative 6, 4. 2 minus negative 2, 4. 6 minus 2, 4. And so on. So you see that our second differences, <coughs> oh, bless me, are in fact all constant. They are all 4. Okay? Because these all have a value of 4, this is therefore a quadratic equation. Okay? Therefore, this is. a quadratic relation. Now that we've shown that this is a quadratic relation, we can go ahead and work with it a bit. So our first step is to kind of try and figure out what the x-intercepts are. So using our tab table of values, let's just plot all those points and see if we notice anything. So I'll plot the first point, negative 2 and 14. I'm going to make my y-axis go up by 2 so I can fit everything on here. So negative 2 and then up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Plot my point. Negative 1 and 0. There's that point. And then I'm going to go ahead and plot all my other points super fast. Ready? 1, 2, 3. There they are. So now... I'm going to connect all of these points with a nice smooth curve. There is the parabola of equation y equals 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 1. Now, what are the x-intercepts of this parabola? So if we look at our graph, the x-intercepts are where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So where does it intercept the x-axis. We'll notice that happens right there and right there. 
what are the values of x in the, at those points? Take a look. The value of x here is negative 1. The value of x here is at 5. It's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x-axis. This is at negative 1 on the x-axis. So our x-intercepts are x equals negative 1 and x equals 5. Okay. Now, if we go, if we look at the equation, the equation is y equals 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 1. Our x-intercepts are 5 and negative 1. You'll notice that there should be some type of rule that will help us get the x-intercepts by just looking at the equation. Because you'll notice we've got a 5 in the equation, and our x-intercept ended up being 5. And there's a 1 in the equation, and the other x-intercept was negative 1. Okay? So you'll see that there should be some kind of rule that will get us to go from the equation to the x-intercepts without having to calculate anything. One other thing I should have explained is as to why parabolas have two x-intercepts. Okay? Not all parabolas will have two x-intercepts, as we'll see. But in this case, with this parabola, this parabola goes down, the y values decrease, and then it crosses the x-axis. And then once it reaches its vertex at the minimum point there, the y values start to increase again, and it's going to come back through the x-axis. So this parabola has two x-intercepts. Okay? Just based on the shape of parabolas, most parabolas are going to go through that x-axis twice. Good. Okay. Now let's write our general rule for determining the x-intercepts. And I'll show you a proof as to why we can make this general rule. So, if we're given a quadratic relation in the form y equals x minus r times x minus s, um, we know that that's quadratic because we went through and filled out that did those finite differences and saw their second differences are constant. So we know it's quadratic. If we're given the equation in that form, y equals x minus r, x minus s, our x-intercepts are r and s. So whatever that r value is and whatever that s value is, those are our x-intercepts. Okay? So if I had y equals x minus 1, x minus 2, write that better, x minus 2, that's in the form x minus r, x minus s. And you'll notice that r has been replaced by 1, and s has been replaced by 2. So the x-intercepts are x equals 1, and x equals 2. Okay? Let's go ahead and do a proof and see why this occurs. So if we do the proof here, so I've got the equation y equals x minus r. Let's write that clear. y equals x minus r times x minus s. Okay, if I want to find the x-intercepts, so I want to find where the parabola goes through the x-axis. Let me just highlight the x-axis so we remember what that is. The x-axis is the horizontal axis. Okay, if I want to know where this parabola goes through that axis, the y values of any point on this x-axis are going to be zero, okay? Because it's not up or down at all, it's right on the x-axis. So all of the points on this x-axis are going to be zero. So if I want to find what the x-intercepts are, my first step is to set y to equal zero. Because we know any time we're going through the x-axis, the y value is going to be zero. So if I set y to equal 0, and I go on to solve this equation, I know a quadratic in this form is going to have two x-intercepts. It's going to have r and s. So let's consider these one at a time. Okay? It might help if we look at this as this is just a green blob, and this is 
a blue glob. Okay? Don't worry about what's under there right now. Okay? So I have 0 equals a green blob times a blue blob. If I want to solve for the green blob, I want to move the blue blob over. In order to do that, I've got to divide it over. Because I have green times blue, so to move blue to the other side, I have to divide it over. So I'm going to divide both sides by a blue blob. Good. Now these blue blobs will cancel. A blue blob divided by a blue blob is 1. 0 divided by a blue blob is 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. So what I'm left with is 0 equals the green blob. Okay. If we can accept that, let's go back and do this again, but let's remember what's underneath these green and blue blobs. So let's get rid of all that. Okay. So if I want to first solve for this x minus r, oh, let's keep it consistent and do it in red. If I want to solve for the x minus r, let's divide the x minus s to the other side. So divide both sides by x minus s. These will cancel. Zero divided by anything, no matter what that is, is going to be zero. So I'm left with 0 equals x minus r. And because I'm no longer multiplying this by anything, I can get rid of these brackets. Good. So now I have 0 equals x minus r. Now, now we're about to see why an x-intercept is equal to r. Because if we take this r and move it to the other side, the sign is going to change. So it's going to become a positive r. So I'm going to have 0 plus r. And we know 0 plus anything is just whatever that anything is. So I'm left with a positive r on that side. And the x is still there. So let's write that. Let's reverse that order so it, it looks more familiar to us. So if r is equal to x, x must be equal to r. So we have just shown half of the proof. Okay. Remember originally I told you that the x-intercepts of y equals x minus r times x minus s, one of them is r. So we just went through and showed that if we set y equal to 0, so solving for the x-intercept we set y equal to 0, if we do that and go ahead and solve, we get that x is equal to r. So whatever the r value is in this equation, that's what the x-intercept is going to be. Okay, But remember, it's always going to be the opposite of what you see. Because remember, in brackets, it's opposite world. So we see a negative 1 inside the brackets here. But that r value is actually just positive 1. Because eventually, that r value, that x minus r, that negative r, is going to be transported across the equal sign, making it positive. That's why the opposite occurs. Okay, So inside the brackets isn't just a magical opposite world. Um, you can remember that as a trick, but this is why it happens, is because that minus r is eventually going to be transported across the equal sign. And we know when it goes across the equal sign, it, it changes its integer value. Right? It goes from a negative to a positive. Okay, if I went through and did this entire thing and solved for x minus s instead of x minus r, I would, the opposite would happen, right? I would divide everything by x minus r. The x minus r's would cancel. Okay, I'll actually go through and, and do that just so we can see. So, okay. Oh, I have to erase one more thing. Get rid of that line. Okay, let's do it for the other one. Let's prove that S is also an x-intercept. 